Welcome to Open Mic Night. This is episode 74 for March 23rd, 2016. So now let's get to the main event. It's phenomenal. Welcome to Open Mic Night. Open Mic Night is the show where we talk about everything Apple related. If it remotely relates to Apple, whether it's news, uh, tips, tricks, anything that we can talk about that relates to Apple, we are going to do it here. And the show has started about a year ago and it has definitely evolved since then. And so it's been kind of fun to see it grow and see it change and all the different stuff. And we've added a co-host since then and everything like that. Uh, and now we are part of the Geeks Network. We have been for a little bit now, but the Geeks Network is a compilation of a bunch of different podcasts that all revolve around technology. So if you're into Windows, home servers, smart home, anything like that, head over to thegeeksnetwork.com and you can find all of the podcasts there. And of course, Open Mic Night is a part of that network. We also want to thank WLMNRadio.com for streaming us. Uh, Roger and everyone over there are fantastic. And we Hope they're doing well down there. And we also want to tell you that all the show notes, information, everything like that, this show is part of my network, which is the 2980 network. So 2980network.com is where you can find all of the information, subscription links, uh, show notes, all of that, and as well as our other podcasts and things like that. You can find that all out over there. One thing I always, I have been forgetting to announce is that if you guys were a part of this, if you like followed me over from Uyghur Tech, you'll notice that Uyghur Tech is actually no longer a website. It just links straight to 2980. I moved the blog over to 2980. I moved everything over. So if you go to 2980, there's actually a link for Uyghur Tech uh, for the tech blog. And that's where all like the tutorials and stuff like that go. I just want to consolidate, put it all into one. And it just made a lot of sense instead of having two different websites. So I keep forgetting to mention that uh, some of you noticed right away and noticed that the links, everything still works. So if you had an old link, it'll just link you right to the article on the new website. Uh, but just thought I'd throw that out there in case any of you were confused. Yes, that is on purpose. And uh, it's, it's done for multiple reasons, but mainly just to keep it easy on me. And 2980 Network is my new thing. Uh, Uyghur Tech has since probably we can almost say officially been retired. It's, it's still lingering in some aspects, but, but it's on its way out the door. I didn't have time to do the consulting side anymore and all that sort of stuff. So it was slowly starting to come down, uh, but we've transferred it pretty much all over to the 2980 network. All righty. So back by some demand, we'll say popular demand. Call him, Bob. Call him. How's it going, man? I'm good. I'm doing good. well. Yeah. God, it's been like so long since we've done a podcast. It's been it's been a long weeks, while. I think. So uh, I know we had. I was out of town, and then last week uh, I was having issues, and so we just we just haven't done it in three weeks. But you know that's okay. It's all right. Although. Uh, so the one thing I did want to mention about the survey was I thank you, first of all, to all you guys who went out and did the survey. It really helps me out. And this year, there was a lot of different answers than there were last year. And that's why I do the survey every year because you guys, uh, some different people take it and I get different insights and stuff like that. So there were some comments about uh, scheduling and stuff like that. So I am going to try and do a much better job of at least letting you guys know in advance if there is not going to be a show. Uh, but we do try and do this weekly, but just as like kind of like a disclaimer, Claimer, uh, we just, you know, we're busy. Uh, I'm finishing up law school. Colin works full time. And then I am also transitioning now from law school to studying for the bar. So this summer is going to be extremely interesting. <laughs> we are still going to see how that goes, but I still think I will definitely need a study break. And I love podcasting and doing open mic night for you guys. But that's kind of the reason it's a little uh, off and on just because our schedules are so, and especially mine, I, I'll blame myself. <laughs> My schedule is so just up and down and I can never tell when a project's going to come up. Or for example, I have a 30 page paper due Monday. So uh, you never know when you're going to have these things. They just come up and uh, you got to take care of them. Did that really just come up? Well, no, but <laughs> in my mind it did. I was like, oh, that's on that that's Monday. You know, it's whatever that comedian wakes up. He's like, oh, shoot, that's due today. Yeah, like that's the kind of thing that happens to me. And so, uh, yeah, I got again, two we, weeks. Yeah, like, I got, <laughs> oh, it's, it's like, oh yeah, now it's less than a week. So it's going to be a fun Easter weekend for me, nonetheless, doing all that sort of stuff. Uh, fun little side note, I get to apply to take the bar this week. That's always fun. Got to get my fingerprints and moral character stuff and uh, all that. It's just a blast. We get to fill all that and send it into the state and hopefully uh, they allow us to go ahead and do that. They don't find any errors, but man, let me tell you, it's like the biggest self-examination period that you'll ever go through when you need to fill out the bar app. I mean, they want to know about every single thing that has happened in your life, whether it be 
employment traffic tickets uh, down to the month and the year that if you got a like traffic violation at all, no matter what it is. So I, you start to remember some things like, man, I totally forget about all the stuff that you have to put down. So it's a lot of fun, but uh, it's been busy, but it's been a very good time. Also went to Utah in that time and went, well, I didn't go skiing because of the leg, but I got to see the mountains and they're really pretty and it looked like everyone else was having fun. So, uh, so that was good as well. But another, another thing I learned from the survey, one of you uh, put this in the survey and you put it in last year. I'm not sure who it is. Obviously the surveys are all anonymous, but that you guys like top fives. I know that you guys have liked these. You've wanted to see them in the past. So I thought, well, I'll make it happy in the first show back after we get the surveys all in. Uh, we will do a top five show. Now this top five show is not just limited to one set of top fives. We are going to do a few. But as you guys know, we had the Apple announcement on Monday. And announcement is a very loose term. They did have a few announcements, but not the big, huge hoopla that we see from Apple. It was their very last announcement from their town hall. They call it town hall at the, at the campus they're at right now. So as they start to go forward, their future announcements this year, uh, they all start to say that you know they're in the San Francisco and I can't, the Moscone Center, I think is what it is, and all those different uh, locations. So this will be the last one in the town hall. They'll have a few more in San Francisco, and then next year, uh, they will hopefully be start to be in their new campus. So that's kind of cool, kind of a fun thing. I think it kind of played into the title of their announcement and stuff like that. But the way I thought I would do this is you guys, I know, get, just get inundated. Every time there's an Apple announcement, every one of your podcasts that you listen to, it's Apple related, will go into detail about all that stuff. So what we are going to do to start out the top fives, our first top five tonight is the top five things that uh, you need to know from the announcement. So we're going to take the top five. We're going to go into a little bit of detail on each one, just kind of the top five highlights that you guys can uh, can draw from that. The announcement was really, I mean, just barely over an hour. It was not long. So if you if you did not watch it, you really didn't miss much content. And a lot of that, I will say, stuff that didn't make the top five was stuff like environmental and safety and, and a lot of stuff like that. Uh, but let's just, Colin, let's get into it. And we'll start actually at number five and we'll head back down to one. So uh, number five, in kind of relation to, I guess, environmental, was that you can turn in all your old phones to Apple and they have some, kind of some new technology to take to take care of that, which is something I didn't know you could do. I didn't know they had a recycle program. Was that on your radar, Colin? Did you know that at all? I didn't know they had a recycle program, but I knew that you could turn in old phones to like Apple stores. Okay. That, that was the extent of, that was the recycling program to me is that they would take your old phones. Right. And I think pretty much it's about the same now. I know they have like some sort of trade up program and stuff like that now, but the main thing that they focused on was their new kind of technology. And I forget the name of the robot, but they've named it. Liam, that was it. Uh, so they have this new robot now that basically it was a really cool video if you do kind of want to watch it and it takes your iPhone, suction cups it, holds it. And then within a few minutes, it has taken apart all of your uh, little tiny pieces of your iPhone and sorted it for recycling purposes. So it's kind of cool. It took the gold out, took the copper out, um, took the pieces that maybe couldn't be recycled uh, or that could, you know, or it can't be together, whatever. It took the screen. It just divides it. It's kind of actually really interesting. So uh, they did a big focus in their environmental talk about just being green, being friendly. Uh, they talked all about, you know, power all over the world and they're trying to get to be kind of 100% renewable power uh, and stuff like that. So Colin, was there anything else from the environmental that was big on the power stuff? I mean, really for me, it was just kind of like, okay, they're doing their part to save the, to you know, save energy and save the world. So it's, it's good to see. At least they're being responsible. Yeah. I was going to say that's about it. The one th I mean, there was a statistic that they brought up where it was, it said something about 90% and I can't remember what that 90% was about. Oh yeah. I can't remember. Either. And I, I don't think it had to do with renewable. I think it just had to do with like 90%, like something to, I'm not going to say it because I'm going to get wrong. So I'm just going to say it was something with 90%. Right. Well, they're trying to get, so there was one where like they're in certain locations, they're trying to get it so that all the energy they're using is being, you know, kind of replaced by solar panels or stuff like that. Yeah. And they're putting solar panels on like roofs of buildings so that all of the stores or, or things in that location, uh, whatever they're taking out, they're actually putting yeah. back in, which is kind of cool to see. But yeah, they threw out a lot of statistics and stuff like that. Uh, but the renewing your iPhone is kind of cool. Like you, like Colin said, if you do have an old iPhone, go ahead. And if you're just going to get rid of it, don't throw it in the trash, go take it and just drop it off at an Apple store. If you have one close to you. Um, but you can also go online and I think you can have them, you can print out a mailing label and they will pay for it for you to mail it into them. Uh, if I'm not 
mistaken. That, so I mean, that's pretty smart on their part to do that. So right, kind of reminded me of a gazelle sort of thing where yeah. you're not going to pay for any of the shipping or anything like that. So it makes sense. So if you do want to do your part uh, as well to keep the earth healthy, uh, you can do that, which is kind of cool. And that that machine, which is awesome, I'll, I'll put a link to that video in the show notes. So if you guys want to check out the show notes. Uh, there'll be a link to that video. It's really interesting. All right. So number four, this was shocking to me and I found out it was not shocking to Colin. Uh, we were both kind of had different expectations of what they're going to do, but no new Apple watch, none. Uh, they did not announce anything. Well, they announced a new band. Sorry. There, there's a new band and they went over some stats about how well it's selling, but absolutely besides the new bands, which were kind of cool. I mean, I guess if you're into swapping out your bands, the one thing I was interested to hear was that they, uh, a large majority of Apple Watch users do switch out their band on a normal basis. Now, I do have two sets of bands, but I wouldn't say I switch them out on a normal basis. If I'm going to something really nice, I'm going to like a nice event, or uh, probably when I start my new job, I'll probably switch out for the nicer band. But usually I'm keeping the sport band on just because it's a little bit more comfortable and durable and stuff like that. But I also have the the Milanese Loop one, but that's kind of my for fancy events band, but I don't switch them out normally. But I was I was surprised. I really thought they were going to come in with a a new announcement and maybe not saying, oh, it's available today or available next month. Or I just thought they would at least give us some hint as to the next generation Apple watch, but there was, there was no mention of it. Gone. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I looked it open and I didn't throw it over to for you. A second, no, for a second, I was like, he's wanting me to speak. But to me, the big thing was I wasn't expecting it more so from a few days, like the week before the event. And it was mainly because Wozniak has been like, he's been on some kind of press tour for, I don't know what. And I think it's just because Apple's been in the news with the FBI thing, whatever about that. And he made some comment in an interview that I read saying that he doesn't know why Apple got into the jewelry game. And oh, when, really? I heard, when I heard that part of me was wondering if Tim Cook ever wanted to get into it or was just kind of like, this seems to be the progression that people are going. Let's give our users something that is functional and that will help and that will work. Right. And kind of go from there. I, To me, I don't see them updating it that much over the next few years, let alone the next 12 months. I see it staying the way it is because if they go to the round face, I feel like it's going to look too much like the Moto 360. It's there's just going to be too much crossover. It's like right now the Apple watch is the Apple watch because of how it looks. But if they keep switching it more, it's just going to be like, I feel like they're just going to kill it quicker than anything else. Right. Well, and I've, I've kind of started, okay, since they didn't announce it, I was kind of starting to think of uh, what their plan might be. And you and I both kind of talked about this, that they'll probably maybe talk about it in the summer or maybe actually wait until the fall to release their new, their new version. If they do do one this year at all, which I think they need to. Now, I don't think we need anything revolutionary. I just think you need to update the speed of the watch and certain things of just, you could have the exact same form factor and I would be happy if they increased the, uh, speed and everything of that. Cause it, it does lag a little bit during certain times, but it, what I was going to say was, you know, I hope this isn't a thing of we're seeing the next iPod for Apple where, okay, so this is their wearable now and it's really cool. And everyone's into wearables kind of like the iPod. It was the first time you could put music and be portable and it was really cool. And then the iPhone came out and you had the iPod as part of your phone. And I, there may be another wearable coming down the future that we can't even see yet. Can't even predict yet. Uh, that kind of just takes over. And the Apple watch is kind of that weird thing that was the first wearable Apple ever made, but not where they wanted to be. And I had, had no idea kind of about these little comments that Waz was making or that we're getting kind of hints from Apple, but it'd be interesting to see if they do stick with this, how often they update it. Being a wearable, who's to say, I mean, you don't need to update these things every year. Now, if you want to keep up with the competition, because right now the competition is blowing them out of the water. I mean, a lot of the features and just how smooth they look and work. And the one thing I've been, I, there's one person at work that has uh, one of the other watches. I can't remember exactly which one it is, but it's one of the newer ones that just came out recently. And the speed and snappiness of switching between apps is phenomenal. Uh, when I open an app, even if it's just ESPN to check scores, you know, it's a good seven second to 10 second wait before those actually load. Now it doesn't sound like a long time, but when you're used to it on your phone and when you're seeing these other watches, it can be a little bit. So I don't know. That'd be really interesting to see 
where they go with this. Cause now I'm totally baffled. I was really expecting to hear something new and now it's kind of an open book of, or not an open book. It's, it's, it's closed, but we don't know what's going to happen uh, in the future with the Apple watch. But Colin, do you think we'll see one this year? Or are they just going to hold off completely? I think they hold off completely. And right. if they do announce one, they announce the design and it's going to be like the last one where it's, here's the design. It's not going to come out for nine months. Yeah, that, that could be true. So, we could also see, I mean, maybe they're doing all their improvements via software. WWDC, you know, it's a developer's conference. Maybe we see the next uh, operating system, watch OS or whatever it is, uh, the yeah. new version of that. And then maybe you're right. Maybe we don't, maybe we hear about the announcement in the fall of what the new model is going to look like and it comes out next March anyway. And I think that might be important too because people are spending a lot of money on these watches. And if they were to start releasing these every year with the minimal amount of improvements that you can do to a wearable watch, I don't know if people would be too happy about that when you're paying. They did drop the price. We should talk about that. That was one of the big things they did talk. They on dropped it $50. One, it was only on one. Really? It was on whatever one was $350 the sport? or 300 because now it's 249 So it was Sport, I believe. Okay, that's good. Well, I thought it was three fifty going down to three hundred. Is that not right? Oh, I thought I said two forty nine somewhere. We'll check right now. I'll I've see. seen a lot of numbers in the past few days. So. That is totally fine. Let's see. So if we we're going to go buy one right now, and we wanted the Apple Watch Sport, which is the cheap end. Okay, so yes, the thirty eight millimeter is three hundred, and okay, they dropped them all down because forty two oh, millimeter. Well, I shouldn't say all. All of the sports because the forty two millimeter is now three fifty, and that was the starting price. So that okay. forty two millimeter was four hundred. Now let's go three, up. Three fifty is the one I was thinking was where I saw fifty. So okay, yeah, three fifty is now the new price for the forty two millimeter, which was at four hundred. And okay. then let's go in and check out just the watch and see if this went down. These start at. Oh, see, it's really hard when you get into the watch because you get all the different bands and stuff like that. So it looks yeah. like about six fifty would be where that starts. So maybe those ones didn't come down, but I'm not sure where those started out. But yeah, I, I don't think those went down. But the the sport did go down. So interesting. Oh no, you can get these new ones, stainless steel for about five forty nine. So okay, yeah, it all just varies once you get into the higher end. But they did drop the prices. That's all that matters is they are dropping yeah. the price, which would usually indicate a new model coming but also That's could true. indicate just an adjustment to the market. Maybe they did say that it was the number one smartwatch in the world. Now we don't know obviously how they get that metric, but if they're seeing that these other watches are starting to come down in price, then maybe they are just adjusting for this year to make sure they can keep up in sales with the current watch they have. So interesting. That was the Apple watch news. All right. So number three, they did a big announcement kind of recapping all of their health apps when you think of health kit and stuff like that. And they came out with a new one called care kit, which is extremely interesting. Now we're not going to recap what they've done in the past, but basically you are able to track your health information. Now what care kit does is care kit is pretty much from what I got from it and Colin, I'll, I'll see if this is what you thought of it too. But for me, care kit was a connection between you and your doctor and it provides them to provide you with kind of updates on your care. So uh, the example they used was surgery. You go in and have surgery and they showed the sheet you get, which I can totally relate to since I just had this. They give you a sheet when you go home with instructions of what you are supposed to do. And it's just kind of a wonky sheet. They're obviously not going to send you new ones as you progress in your in your care. And this app now was a kind of to replace the sheet, the doctor could give you instructions. It would track you because it has all the tracking metrics uh, for how much you've done towards each goal. And then that information would be relayed to your doctor. Your doctor could then come back to you and update it if they want to. Now that was just one example. They talked about all sorts of things from uh, disease, you know, prevention and control and diagnosis and all of that. And they, they talked about a wide range, but pretty much it was kind of a deeper integration of health kit than we've ever seen before. Colin, was there, was that kind of the, what you got out of it from care kit, just kind of basically a deeper version of health kit? Yeah. And I mean, it just gives them an opportunity to kind of expand as, especially as I'm looking at an article right now where it's talking about the first app released into the care kit is a Parkinson's disease research app. Yeah. So it just gives it, in that aspect, it gives the doctor better, not control, but just better understanding, especially when it comes to Parkinson's disease, like where a patient is on a daily basis, let alone an hourly basis. So they can better track like, if something's progressing, if something's actually getting better or whatever comes to with that. So, I mean, it makes sense that they're trying to kind of push this more 
I mean, it's getting into the internet of things kind of idea where it's just everything is connected, which is cool. And also just kind of like, it's a good first step, especially for something right. such as Parkinson's. So, well, yeah. And, and we're going to be, we are always going to, well, we're already in that generation where we grew up with certain things and now our life is changing. Whereas, you know, kids nowadays are going to grow up with this stuff. and It's not going to be any different to them. But for you and I who that this was just, it's totally new and novel. So I think it's kind of cool though, to see just the progression of that. They gave a lot of information on the studies that have already been done, which I just somehow missed. I didn't know that you could participate in these studies with the health information on your phone. So they gave example of um, kids with learning disabilities. And if you give the kids this app at an early age, it pretty much plays videos and it watches their face to see how they're reacting, their facial cues. Are they smiling? Are they even looking at the video and stuff like that? And basically, it, then it uses some algorithm to assess and see if they have any sort of, you know, learning disability and stuff like that. So it was extremely interesting. And so they said, you know, when you put this in the hands of people, make it as easy as it is because it's on a device you already have. And as easy it is to sign up for these uh, studies, you all of a sudden have all this data. Like, I think that's the thing. We are, we've already talked about big data and that's been a thing. It's going to get even bigger because if yeah. it's this easy to participate in that sort of stuff, but that's exactly what the science community needs. I'm not at all a scientist, but I'm guessing the more data, the better. I mean, it can't hurt. Yeah. And oh, so yeah. it's going to be kind of cool. And I, I think it's, I think it's interesting, especially after going through this whole surgery thing. And right now going through PT, it'd be nice to have that app and have like an updated. Cause I just, again, got, I just went to physical therapy and I got a set of printouts of what I'm supposed to do on paper. And it would just be kind of cool if, if I could track my movement and if maybe I could walk and it could tell my PT what my gait is, you know, how much movement I'm getting on, on both legs as I'm trying to get my walking pattern back to normal. It's just kind of interesting. And so I can definitely start to see the benefits of this sort of stuff. So, you know, it's not unique to Apple. A lot of other companies are starting to get into this, but I think Apple being as popular as they are and however many devices they have in the hands of people around the world, it's kind of cool to see them taking an initiative and kind of starting to do this more. All right. So the next one, not too big of a deal, but there is a new iPad Pro, a smaller uh, 9.7 inch iPad Pro. So that is kind of a, it's the baby brother to the big iPad Pro that they just released last year. Kind of interesting, a fast version. And I think they're really trying to compete with Windows in this market of really having a, a device that is portable, that's touch, that has a keyboard that you can attach at some point. Still a very awkward device, if you ask me. It always has been. And it's, it's kind of interesting to try and treat your iPad as a full-blown laptop um, when you can't do certain things that on a desktop Mac you can do. So it's still a little bit interesting to me. I still think they're, they're going to work out the kinks with the operating system. For me, it's not there. Now, other people say it's fantastic and they use these as their full laptops. For me, it's, it's not there though. Uh, Colin, would this be attractive to you as a laptop replacement yet? If not, you were looking to get one? Um, I don't know. I'm kind of... Your laptop goes out right now. Would you consider at all? Would, you, would the thought even cross your mind of, shoot, okay, I need a new computer. Would you ever consider getting an iPad Pro with a keyboard? Yeah, especially one of the 12-inch ones, definitely. Okay. Really? Especially, I mean, especially based on price. That's true. Yeah. Well, because uh, how much are the regular iPad Pros? Like eleven hundred? Yeah, they're, they're priced there, pretty close to a regular MacBook. They, well, especially when you start to add in the cost of the keyboard and the pencil, because really to make those things fully all worth it, all yeah. worth it, you want to get the pencil and the which those are an extra two hundred bucks on top, I think. Right. Right. So, so, a hundred apiece. Yeah. So. To get into the biggest iPad Pro, you are looking at. So, so 12.9 inch from eight, it starts at $800. So for and 32 gig, you can get 800, but 32, if this is going to be your laptop replacement, it's pretty low. And then but, you're looking at 949 for 128 and you 30, start to get, Oh wow. That's actually not that bad. 949. No, especially if you use, you know, cloud storage for everything. If Dropbox, you know, I pay yeah. Dropbox just dropped their price. I have a terabyte on Dropbox now for, I want to say $5 a month, which is kind of interesting. It's, I can throw huge files in there, which is kind of cool. Well, I mean, for three bucks a month, you get 200 gigabytes on iCloud. Yeah. Oh, that's true. Even, yeah, even better to use with the iPad as iCloud. And yeah. since all of the iPads now come standard with pages, numbers, and all that stuff, right. I mean, it would kind of stink because you would have to switch between, especially for me, if I was switching between Word at work and pages at home, that right. would be kind of frustrating. But I feel like that's not a switch I would be upset making. No. Well, and you could, st if you wanted to... 
Word works really good with OneDrive on the iPad because yeah. I have used Word and it oh, opens yeah. from Dropbox decently and it saves back. But man, if you would switch, if you could do use OneDrive too, if you used a combo of these things, yeah, okay. So so I'm starting to be convinced that that you could. You know, for me, obviously, um, it's a lot of the podcasting stuff. It's yeah. a lot of video stuff. It's like, it's still wonky. You know, what I can't do on the iPad, I can record the podcast great. I can record a podcast, it's fine. Uh, but then I can't upload that to Mediafire, which is my host. You know, and that's just a very simple thing that maybe, maybe I could figure out a way, maybe with iCloud storage or something like that. But just yeah. makes it a little more complicated for me. But, but interesting. And I kind of like that they did a 9.7. This was the announcement of going small which I think is going to make a lot of people happy. Um, there, yeah. there's, just, there's people out there that still like these smaller form factor and the Pro still being a very beefy, powerful iPad just at a very slightly smaller uh, physical, whatever, footprint. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's nice. And I think the problem with small in the past has been as they got bigger, the bigger was more powerful and the smaller were less powerful. And what we saw from this announcement was that smaller does not have to mean less power. Smaller is, yes, we recognize you like a smaller form factor. Here's the beefy processor in a smaller form factor. And it was nice to see. It was kind of cool. Uh, anything else on those iPads or should we move on to the iPhone? No, we can move on. All right. So the iPhone SE came out and uh, what basically if you liked the iPhone 5 and 5S and that form factor, the four inch uh, about form factor, then this is the phone for you. They have a new form factor, which is the iPhone SE, and it is the same exact processor. When you're talking speeds and graphics, you're going to get the same performance as you would from the 6S, just in a four inch phone, which is super cool. It has most of the same sort of stuff. You're looking at uh, a nice camera in it. You can shoot 4K video, has touch ID, has all of that. And it's just in the smaller form factor. Really, that's pretty much all you need to say about it. You can go look at it. It's going to look pretty much the exact same as uh, that 5S that you have the 5, Colin, right? Or 5S. Yeah, it looks like the 5. Yeah, it's exactly so. <laughs> like that. Oh, yeah, because the 5S, didn't it get a little bit bigger? The f I don't think the 5S, I think actually. No, the 5 just, No, the 5S came out second. Yeah. And I think the 5S just barely got a little bit wider, but also a little bit thinner. Okay. Yeah. So it, you're not seeing a whole big difference. So if you have a 5 or a 5S now, if you went to the SE, you really wouldn't see a whole lot of difference. You would just, you'd still have Touch ID, but you'd just have more of the 3D touch or whatever they call it, force touch. Right. So that's, yep. I mean, that's the biggest difference in, in feel, not so much what you can do. Right. Yep, so it's the 4-inch Retina display. Uh, total, if you're into these lengths and widths, 4.87 inches tall, 2.31 inches wide, and thickness is 0.3 inches. So uh, for all of you nerds out there that like that sort of stuff. And with the Retina display, and with oh, I mean, it's just great. That A9 processor and the M9 motion coprocessor are nice. I mean, you're going to see a drastic performance increase. If you are going from a phone that that's, is that size already, you're going to be blown away with the speed of this. Now, the funny part was uh, I went to dinner on Monday with some friends and one of the people literally was just at the, I think it was like Sprint store. I was like, hey, I really like my small phone. Uh, is Sprint gonna, or is Apple going to come out with a new one? He's like, oh no, man, you should buy a new one right now. Like buy one of the new ones. And I told him, I was like, dude, you got sold. because." And so he, like three days ago, and he is just livid because he wanted the small form factor. He loves small phones. And it was funny. So then all of a sudden we had two friends at dinner who we're going to swap phones because he got this brand new six that he doesn't want. And the other guy's like, Oh, well I'll get the new one. Cause the new one's free and then I'll swap you. And it, it was a lot of fun. So the, because let that leads into the price of these things. These things are exactly. going to be a lot cheaper. You're looking at three ninety nine is the starting price. And that is for your two year contract. Um, price. Oh my goodness. So for, so for free, if you have the two year upgrade, it's free. Three ninety nine is the full price, and I think if you're on one of the plans that does the payment, you know, kind of like I'm on Verizon now, I don't get that two year yeah. price, and it's gonna be seventeen dollars a month uh, for that brand new phone. So not a bad option at all. I mean, oh, I would just straight up pay. I I don't have four hundred dollars to spend, but I would find four hundred dollars to buy that phone and just be like, I don't. When I think about getting a new phone, I don't really need a larger phone. I'm right. good with what I have. I would totally buy that mainly because it has everything else the big phone does. Exactly. Who cares? I think it's going to be a huge, a huge seller, especially with that price point. And okay, so oh, on T-Mobile, do you get the two-year like price thing? So every it, two they years, don't you know because they have like the uncontract or whatever the heck okay. it is. They are the ones that monthly thing to pay. Yeah, it so they do the monthly, which I'm. I don't think my parents listen to this, but if they do, like I've thought about asking, like, can we figure out? 
how much I have to pay you. There you go. <laughs> And and for seventeen dollars a month, that's not bad to pay that thing off either. No, I, mean, I would totally like a, do that. It's like a no interest to, version of doing that. Yeah, compared to the thirty two a month that it costs for the six S or six uh, S plus. So yeah. Oh, actually, okay. So I may be mistaken. Depending on what your contract is, it could be thirteen dollars a month uh, for the sixteen gig, or for the sixty four is sixteen sixty four. So I was thinking right around that sixty four gig. You probably want the sixty four gig. See, I think the next time I get an iPhone or, or a different iPhone, I would definitely get the higher storage. Storage mainly because I want to put. I don't want to just have Spotify. I know this is a conversation for another time and not a top five, but <laughs> yeah, sometimes you want to have. I want to put the music that's on my computer. On your phone. On my phone because I like the music that's on my computer. Right, right. And you could, if you had unlimited data, which I don't know if you do or not, but you could do iTunes Match, which then everything shows up on your phone and you can stream it if you want. But I just don't want to pay the 25 bucks a year. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Which it sounds like such a low thing, but 25 bucks during whenever, whatever month it is can sometimes... Well, and when you're already paying for Spotify, it's hard to justify that extra twenty five dollars a year. Exactly. You know well, what I mean? Because you're already I mean, paying I, premium. That's true. Especially so, because I don't have all the music that you get on premium. So, you know. Right. <laughs> yep. So yeah, all all that sort of stuff. But yeah, so this new iPhone SE, I think people are really gonna like it. I think it's gonna be a um, a hot phone. And like I said, the theme of this announcement was going smaller, but still giving you all of the power and resources that you would have if you had the bigger model. So it's kind of nice. All right, so I'm going to call an audible here. I'm going to add one more thing in from the announcement that I just, I'm not going to, we're not going to go into it, but I wanted to mention that they did it. Uh, it was kind of interesting. So at the very beginning um, of the announcement, I can't remember where it was, but it was somewhere in the beginning. Um, Tim Cook talked about the FBI thing. He went in and really made it vocal about how, where Apple's stance is on protecting customer data and kind of where they're at with the FBI and and just kind of laid it out there and was very vocal about their opinion and where they stand. He didn't go into it any more than that. And we don't need to either. You know, we don't need to, you know, we can debate back and forth on which side is right. Uh, but one good point that was brought up by Mac Geek Gab that I was listening to that I didn't think about. People were giving him such a hard time. People on one side of the argument were saying like, he shouldn't have brought this up in public. This wasn't a big thing. Like he doesn't need to make this part of their announcement and stuff like that. Counterpoint, the FBI was the one who made this public. Um, the FBI and Apple have worked on things in the past. Apple, FBI has come to them with requests and it's all been kept private. We don't know about all that stuff. 95% of the stuff that they have worked on together, we don't know about. FBI chose to do this in a public manner. And I think it's because they kind of want people to know about it. And I think to, to give them enough credit, I think they want kind of the reaction from the public to see what we as Americans think about this and if we think it's right or not. So the FBI was the one who chose to make this public. Uh, Tim Cook just didn't all of a sudden, and Apple didn't start making this public to to attack the FBI. So I think people kind of misconstrue the facts on how this all came out. But yeah. so so I think he was totally in the right just to state where they stand on things and and go from there. So it was kind of interesting that he did it. But if you weren't watching, uh, it's just something good to know that he talked about. Yeah. Um, all right. So that that was it. Like I said, super quick announcement, super short. Uh, nothing big uh, besides the really the SE and the new iPad Pro. Those are the only two product announcements. Other than that, everything else is kind of just a recap and a few little announcements. Excuse me, a few little announcements here and there. So now we are going to move into some other our, some other top five. So my next top five that I wanted to do was top five. Now it's so cliche nowadays. There's so many YouTube videos on this, but I still like talking <laughs> about it. Top five apps on your phone. Now, uh, I told Colin, or I don't know if I told him, but I, I think he got the point, was that you know it's kind of some different apps. We're not going to talk to you about the main one, Spotify or anything like that. We're going to go into some kind of, okay, never mind. It's on your list. <laughs> that is on your list. But we're going to give you some different ones besides a lot of the main I'll ones. I'll put that last. No, no, yeah. You can keep, <laughs> I just looked over like, okay, Spotify was a bad example to use. But you know, we're not going to talk about Facebook and Twitter and those being our favorite. Even though they might be some of our most used, they are not going to be what we talk about. So, all right, so... We'll start at number five and go number one and we'll just kind of trade off. So my number five was uh, If This Then That. I'm sure you guys have heard of this service, but the reason I like the app is because the app is, I think, a great way to use the service. The web interface is great too, but on the phone, I was surprised how super simple it was to use If This Then That. Super quick, if you don't know what that is, basically it's a, it's a program that you can set up to trigger events in your life based on other things that happen. At a certain time, I want to send out a tweet. When sunrise hits, I want my lights to turn off. And, and all sorts of stuff like that. And you can get crazy with IF, if this and that, IFTTT. So uh, if you are a user of that, I would suggest grabbing the app on the phone. It's really cool. I use it for all of my social media stuff. 
And that's how I check it is on the phone. So for example, uh, every time a YouTube video goes up on my channel, it'll send out a tweet. And when I post a new podcast and it's out there on the RSS feed, it'll send out a tweet, stuff like that. And so that's how I control my social media. But that's my number five. Comment your number five. My number five is something called coach.me. And I hadn't is, heard of this, so I'm excited. It's also, it started as a website, but is also an app. So okay. uh, about a year ago, remember the app Streaks? Yes. Yep. It's, it's not a play on it or kind of a variation of it, but it's similar in the fact that it kind of gives you an app where you can keep yourself accountable and it's within a community. So if you sign up for something and you don't make it private, however many other people are signed up for whatever task it is that you're wanting to complete that day. And most of the tasks are kind of they're generic. Like the three on mine are exercise, weigh in which is private and then there's one it's be grateful no. it's just a reminder every day of like be grateful it's like at, you can add a note like what were you grateful for that day which found out when we were coming back from bachelor party that like telling yourself or reminding yourself every day of something that you're grateful for or thankful for is actually stress relieving oh so right. when i heard that i was like okay i'm glad i do this because it is one of those things where especially some days in the morning where it's just not a great day all of a sudden you see a pop-up on your phone that says did you re did you remember to be grateful today and it's one of those it's kind of cool in that way but in addition to just keeping yourself accountable you can actually hire it costs a little bit of money i haven't done it you can hire a coach so if it comes really? to exercising or it comes to losing weight you can hire someone to kind of coach you along like here's what you should be doing here's what you should be looking for here are different things that maybe you should try just different things like that like it's it's a cool app it's kind of the app is hit or miss especially because some days it'll have a streak going and i'll click like the button to say that i did this and it's like first time ever and i'm like <laughs> no that's not right right so some days it's kind of weird but for me I kind of get off and on with it where I'll go four days by checking in and then I'll forget for three. But it's just one of those things where unlike streaks where it was kind of just, this is for me, like some of the things where it keeps you accountable where someone's like, they pray, it's not praise or they like gave you props is what oh, it is. Okay. So they can it's see a little bit of a social it. interaction. Yeah. So okay. it's kind of, it's cool in that way. The website is really slick. The app needs some work a little bit. Okay. Is it free? <laughs> Yes, the app is free. Okay. I'm going to have to give that a try then. So that's coach.me, which I was excited to hear about the, what that was. I thought maybe it was an entire workout thing, but it's kind of cool to see that it's not. It's like everything. So it, And it has like categories for whatever you want to kind of be coached or coach yourself through. Oh, it's, cool. It's to help you set up habits. It's a So habit studying habit. could be one of them. Yeah. You know, some of that. Okay. Studying cool. would be one. Reading. It, they have the bigger communities are the ones that are on the for, at the forefront. But there are a lot of like sub communities where it's like 300 people within it instead of 6,000. So, gotcha. I wonder if there's going to be people in there that are studying for the bar at the same time. <laughs> there there might fun. be. You never know. All right. So, number four, my number four was LastPass. And I have talked to you guys about LastPass. It is the password manager, my password manager of choice. And the phone app is awesome, especially if you have Touch ID on your phone. If you have a phone that has that, it makes it super easy to go in there and snag a password. If you are someone who has done what we are all supposed to do, and gone in and created one of those super long, like just random array that LastPass actually generates those passwords for you. It's really nice to have the app on your phone for when you are not around your computer. If you're on a device that does not have uh, your vault, you could use your phone and you can also use your phone, uh, the app on your phone to unlock other things on your phone. So uh, kind of cool. But the LastPass app is great on there. They just did a whole rebranding and it looks slick. It's really nice. So uh, number four for you. My fourth is Howl, which is actually a podcasting hosting or a podcast hosting service, which it's just a lot of the big podcasts. The one that I listen to the most on there is WTF with Mark Marin. Yes. Um, so they have a bunch of others. I think this is inter like I am in the podcast world and I hadn't heard of Howl. So this is cool. Like it's kind of like this is why we do this show because you always yeah. hear of cool apps that other people use. Howl is a lot like. I mean, it's like Earwolf, only Earwolf doesn't have, the Earwolf podcast service doesn't have an app, at least okay. a good one that I've ever found. 
but Howl is completely housed. It has all of the Howl branded podcasts on it. So you can find whatever you want. It does cost, I think it's $4.99 for six months. I think it's on six months interval six month intervals. So you can kind of do that. But the big one I listen to on that is WTF. Okay. Yeah, it looks like they have a bunch of different uh I'm trying to look at some of them here. And they'll actually if you set up uh like send notifications, they'll send notifications when new like new podcasts come onto the Howl app. Nice. Man, look slick. Like just from it, the screenshots. Looks it great. is I I mean, it's great. Some days it can be kind of annoying when you have to when you want to download stuff. How right. you kind of, it fumbles where you have to like kind of click a bunch of things to get to the one you want to go to. But so, I love it. Would there be a point of me having this app if I just subscribed to WTF through iTunes? Is it the same feed or are you getting extra well, stuff? On iTunes, you don't you only get a certain number of Oh, okay, podcasts. I didn't know that. So he has premium content that on iTunes you can purchase it per podcast. Okay. But if you just pay the four ninety nine, you get every single episode he's ever done. Gotcha. I didn't know he did premium stuff. Cool. All right. So that would be the point of the membership. Awesome. All right, so number three, for me, I just switched up my weather app uh, because of a recommendation from someone else. It's called Dark Sky. So Dark Skies, are I, I really like it. I can't remember how much it cost originally, uh, but just a very simple, easy to use weather app that really focus on when there's going to be precipitation. So, I mean, as you can see, the main, if my thing wants to focus, but it's not, it's not going to. Anyway, you scroll through and there's kind of a graph and it tells you at each hour of the day what's going to happen, which most weather apps do do that. This just does it in a very nice manner. Focus on that. You can also get alerts of when it's going to rain. So if you wanted to get an alert like 30 minutes before uh, there's going to be rain in your area, it I don't usually use those features because of the drain on always using my location. Now, you know, I know they've gotten a lot better, but I still don't use them. So I don't use that feature, but I mainly got this because of the interaction on the Apple watch. It's nice. The Apple watch app is a lot better than the other one I had before that. So uh, I got it for those two reasons, but just an overall great, you know, general Apple or not general Apple, jeez, general weather app for your Apple devices does everything. It's got the map. It's got the radar. It's got all of that. So it's got everything that any other weather app would have. I think it just does it in a little bit nicer manner. So there we go. It's dark sky. Uh, my third one is Spotify. I listen to a lot of music. Tons, <laughs> tons. If you follow him on Twitter, the coolest thing that I think uh, you told me Spotify could do is like every year they do that. Like how much did you listen it's, and stuff? It's a year in review And I was like, thing. do you ever turn it off? I think Colin just has soundtrack to his life. He walks around with his phone in his pocket and just has music playing all the time. Because it was that's about how many hours it was. You are not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> it was 45,000 minutes. It was, that's a lot. It's a, <laughs> it's a I, month. But the best part about it was like when I did mine, it's like you listen to like 10 different artists like in the entire year. And Colin's like, you need to diversify, man. Like you yeah. need to really. Mine was like 450 artists. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's also, I listen to like the curated playlist, which is different artists at all times. So, And that's what you got me into. So this year will be a lot different because right now I'm just, that's all I listen to is the curated stuff. So I'm sure it's just cranking through the different artists. Yeah. The only downside to that is I'm very bad because I'm always driving when I'm doing this. I'm very bad at knowing who the, oh, I really like that song, but I have no idea who sings. I had no idea the title. So Dude, trust me, I'll be sitting at work doing the same thing well, or I'll be sitting at home and I'm like, oh, who's singing that song? And I'll try finding it. I'm like, I'm never going to find it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, can, I can hum like maybe one verse of it and that's about it. So, yeah. all right. So my number two is Venmo. And uh, just, this was mainly coming off the bachelor party. If you have not used Venmo, think of PayPal, uh, but just easier to use. So Venmo is a paying your friends app. So uh, strictly, I think, I don't think they do anything commercially. Yet. Like they don't, Venmo is not a part of like any like cash registers. Like it's not like a square, right? I'm not no, mistaken on that. So. I don't I think mean, so either. Just a, Maybe they'll go that way, but this is mainly focusing on just you paying your friends. So you, I type in Colin's name. I say, hey, send him 15 bucks and it has your bank account linked and it's all free to use, which is really cool. And it's super quick. You can usually have the funds transferred and into your bank maybe in like a day or like, two. I think it's two days. Is, is it two? Is the max. Like it'll say like by this date, but you might get it the next day. Right. So this was perfect for, uh, you know, we had a bachelor party full of guys that we all didn't know each other really. I mean, we had little tiny pockets of friends and it was the guy's family and stuff like that. So the one guy who was kind of organizing the whole thing just told us what his username on Venmo was and we were all just able to pay him for like the events of the weekend. So super simple, easy to use. If you're roommates, it's great for paying bills and stuff like that between each other. Um, all, that, all that sort of stuff. So very simple, but it's Venmo, V-E-N. 
M O. Uh, my number two is mint, which is, that's very confusing because I figured out there's like a weird dating app called mint now. Really? Same spelling. Yeah. You have um, no dating apps in your top five. Yeah. Joke, because Colin hates those things. <laughs> yeah, for, I guess they I, I work can't say jokes so well for else some of us. The joke, so yeah. But, um, mint. Yeah. So the banking app I've for a long time, I've had it since 2012. I think at least I've been signed up for mint got really bad within the last like six or seven months about keeping track with the budgets and everything. Finally kind of got myself back to where it's like, pay attention. Like I switched it out with my regular banking app. So where mint was is now where the banking app is. And the banking app is down in like a subfolder. So if I need to transfer money, I can go to that. But mint has really been helping me kind of focus on this is how much money you have. Spend this, and right? Nothing else, <laughs> right? And and the nice part about Mint is, I believe, isn't it free to connect your bank account in? Yep. Yeah, yeah. All for, of it. I think all of it's free. Okay. See, because like there are some other budget apps that I've noticed I really liked, and then they charge you for connecting your bank account in. So it's kind of nice that Mint does that for free, and then it categorizes things, right? Isn't that kind of the? I mean, it says like, okay, you spend yeah. this much in like food and. And going these, out on restaurants and stuff like that. Yeah. So they have all the categories that they have preset are all, it's all things that you're going to do. But then there are some things like I added one in when it comes to like gas station food. So if like I'm at okay. work and I go get something or for like four bucks or on the weekend, I go and get a Red Bull and a Gatorade. I can kind of factor in when it tells me that it's a gas station purchase. It's not fuel. It's I'm actually purchasing food, so don't put this in my fuel budget. Right. Well, and that, and see, and that is super handy because when Hannah and I did like our premarital counseling, some we did a financial one too, and we had to go in for two straight months and write down every single cent that we spent and where we spent it. And it's not the big ticket items that'll get you. Like you okay. know, those are there, and they 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 are hard for you to make that decision on. The amount of money we spent doing those sort of activities, like fast food and stopping yeah. at the gas station. And when I go to the gas station, I usually always go in and get a drink and stuff like that. Shocking. Like it took, it was more than all the big purchases that we thought we we're going to have to eliminate. We're like, actually, if we eliminate this stuff. So, so that's kind of cool that you can set those custom things in yeah. Mint to do that for you. I didn't know it did that. I'm gonna have to get back into Mint. The only reason I don't use it is because we use a charge card, not through our bank for our everyday purchases. And I don't think they can pull from that. So I'm not sure. You can American add, Express. I believe you can add them, but as you were talking about the something's paid for, that may be you might have to charge pay for that with credit cards and charge cards. I think you might have to pay. Okay, it, maybe I'm not entirely sure. That's good to know. That's good to know. Okay, so um, so yours is Mint and number one. Now we're have number ones. All right, so my number one is a brand new one that I just found two weeks ago when I was on vacation. It's called Daily Bracket. Uh, so I've always told you guys how much I enjoy DraftKings and those sort of things, but also I can't afford them. I, I had to quit. You know, it's just because I'm not good at them. I just enjoy them. Uh, but, but just having something, having teams to root for at night was my favorite part about that. I would have some reason to enjoy watching a basketball game because for me, like NBA and all that stuff, I'm not really that into it. I don't have a team. Omaha doesn't have a team. I never really had one. So it just gave me a reason to watch. Well, daily bracket, uh, there's kind of the free version that you just get in and start using the app. And then you can also, you can bet real money in daily bracket, but what it is, the main version of it every day is there are five different like things. So today there's main ones like, okay, are the Hawks going to win or the Wizards? So there's five, this or this, and you slide left or right. Uh, but there's also some fun ones like, is Steph Curry going to score more or Jordan going to score more uh, tonight uh, in, or is Jordan going <laughs> to, I don't know what it is, but it's like free throws versus threes made. Okay. So it's like a little challenge between those two guys. So it's kind of fun. And this is, this is free. But the way it works is you try and get streaks. So you choose these. You have to get three of the five correct each day to keep moving along. Now, in the free version even, if you got to... Now, this is like so hard. I thought it was going to be super easy. Like If you got to 16 days in a row, you could cash out and get $40, which is kind of cool. So uh, the first few, like it's you're really not going to get into any money unless you're really good at this because you have to get to $20 in order to cash out. You can't just cash out at once. So like, 
one and three dollars is a level, but you can't cash out there. So, uh, but it's, it's just kind of fun. It, it fills that void in my life of just being able to do a quick daily, like picking sort of thing and have something to cheer for without spending a single dime, which is kind of fun. So, so daily bracket, if you're into that sort of thing and you just want something for fun, you also have the social aspect. So all your friends who use it are in there. So you can try and see who's on the highest streak on each day and who's like getting around the circle the fastest, which is kind of fun. So yeah, just something I wake up every morning and I, I put in my five picks and then uh, at night I, I see where I'm at. So it's kind of fun. It's been my most used and favorite app uh, over the past two weeks. So, and oh, speaking of new features, my phone just turned yellow. So uh, we talked about the new uh, iPhone SE, but one of the big announcements with the phone was 9.3 came out yesterday, which is kind of cool. One big feature for, I believe the iPhone six and above is night shift mode which Colin has given us a perfect explanation in the past, but pretty much shifts the lighting on your phone to the warmer side uh, at sun sunset. So at sunset, it turns to the warmer side, basically eliminating the blue light and allowing you to sleep better because uh, those blue lights can mess with your brain late at night. So I just thought I'd throw that out there because I just noticed. But yeah, uh, it's called Daily Bracket. Fun, fun app. I just downloaded it. <laughs> oh, I was going to give you my code. I don't know what it does. I don't, I don't think the code yeah. does anything unless you pay money. Get, but. get over it. All right. Um, <laughs> but my number one, it's it's kind of a simple app, but it's the NHL app. Um, a few months ago, I think it was late November, early December, I bought um, NHL Game Center Live, which is basically similar to kind of MLB TV, but not in a way. It's kind of... The unfortunate part about the NHL is that there's a lot of games kind of shown on other channels such as NHL TV or NBC Sports or NBC, whatever it may be, and you'll get blacked out for those games, which is really frustrating when you pay $26 a month. You're like, let me watch the game how I want. So, so, okay, I thought you meant that was with the free version. So you're paying 26 and then you still can't watch them. Yeah, there, there was like a week or so where it was a number of games in a row telling me that it was the Blackhawks were in market. So I couldn't watch the game on my Xbox and I was furious. I was just like, how is this possible? I don't have NHL TV. Right. Stop that's why you're telling me the that I do. Amount too. Yeah. But the NHL app itself, they just recently updated it. Actually the whole NHL as a whole. So NHL.com NHL, uh, the app, NHL, TV on your Xbox, everything updated. Everything looks the same. There's no differences anymore. It's not one thing here, one thing there. The app itself is great, especially for me when a Blackhawks game is out of market. Um, I love just being able to go. They'll very quickly, kind of like MLB, upload video or upload kind of the cool. highlight. Yeah. yeah whatever the clip for a goal or something may be during Patrick Kane's big kind of uh, during his big streak at the beginning of the year. That was great. I would see he got an assist. I'd be like, how do you do it? Yeah, Very quickly. Yeah. Very quickly within 10 minutes of the goal being scored, the video would be there. So I click it, be able to watch. You can watch the game on your phone, just like MLB TV. It's just, it's just one of those things as I've gotten a lot more into NHL, being able to quickly just open my phone and be like, okay, this is what I want to see. And it's nice because while I said on Game Center, actually, no, I don't think I can watch any team other than the Blackhawks. Now that I'm saying it out loud. Okay. I I purchased saying that my team is the Blackhawks. This is who I want to watch. I'm not sure I can watch other teams. You'll have to test that out because that would be interesting. Because if I was going to do that, that's a lot of money for picking one team and not being able to watch all the games. So that'd be I mean, for a huge hockey fan. I guess that's true. You can purchase like the bigger package, which will give you all the teams. But I think the one I picked was a single team package. Yeah, 26 which, a month. Yeah, which kind of which kind of sucks, good. but I'm only doing four months. So you do. Yeah, and you're only doing four months. And then you're also not paying for that sports package on your television cable bill. Exactly. So when you think about that, it's pretty much a, a wash or you're probably saving money if you were to pay for that, that yeah. package. So kind of cool. All righty. So we, next week, to kind of tease next week, we have one more top five coming right now. But for next week, we are going to do uh, top five things we wished Apple would do or change, which I think is going to be interesting. 
But I kind of want to give that one a little bit more time because I think it'll be a fun conversation. And I'm hoping that we can get some of you back out live. Now, I know we've been off on schedule. So if we can have more uh, live viewers, you guys can all put in your input next week as well. But right now, we're going to finish up with a totally fun one, totally non-related to anything. And we'll just kind of run through these. Uh, but there are top five favorite drinks. And I didn't specify if they had to be adult drinks, but I think we both went that direction. So Yeah, we both went that direction. <laughs> exactly. So starting with number five, uh, and this one's a shout out to Jim Carlson because I know he loves this beer and he doesn't make fun of me for drinking it all. I'm going to go with Budweiser, but uh, it's just a, it's a classic. It's a staple. Uh, if you're a beer drinker and you can't drink a Budweiser, I, I, I don't know. I just think you're, you're kind of one of those, you know, little mm, weird snobby drinkers, which I, you know, but yeah, no Budweiser is just a staple and it's, it's a fun one, fun on the weekend. Uh, all enjoy. So that's my number five. And and the joke was that Jim made fun of me because I took a picture out in Utah on the mountains with my Budweiser and they were all making fun of my beer choice. So I'm, yeah, okay, understandably I'm, so. I'm laughing right now or like smiling really wide because the way you're saying that you're speaking as though you're like a 65 year old man who's been drinking Budweiser since it came out. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I feel like though. I feel like I, in my mind, I am like a person who wants to stick to the classics. Uh, yeah, like, I, 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 Gotta when, love pork chop in a can. <laughs> when I got back from war, we had a Budweiser in our hand. You know, that, that's, that's just how I feel right now. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> right. hey, you're number five. I can see it on the list. Go ahead and list yours before you oh, give me any. This is this is the champagne of beers, so oh, I yeah. don't know what you're talking it's about. Of, uh, beer. The, so the caveat for when it comes to Miller High Life, delicious. <laughs> it has to be cold and it has to be in a bottle. Otherwise, I can I can testify to drinking a cold out of the can that's in my fridge right now. Disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. Yeah, I'll give you that one because I didn't I didn't think I liked it until I was over at your place. That was what you had. I tried I'm like, man, you're you're right. Like I didn't think so you'd be right about better. that, but I had always had the can version and, and it's, it's it just model. absorbs tin. Okay. So. <laughs> it's kind of like how for some reason uh, uh you know when you still go to Walgreens and get the Coke in a glass bottle, it still tastes better. I don't so know much better. Yeah, it's so much out better. of a out of glass bottle, delish. <laughs> you can't beat it. Yeah. I went to Walgreens the other day to get one of those. Like specifically, I stopped by and all they had was diet. I was like, come on. I want the was that like the Mexican Coca-Cola? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. those are the best because they use so real cane good. sugar. So good. <laughs> All right, so number four on my list, I had to look up who made it because I've always just referred to it as 8-Bit, but it's a Tallgrass Brewing Company. They're 8-Bit Pale Ale, and it's really good. Uh, if you've seen the can before, it's got like a Pac-Man on the front, and it's just fantastic. Can't say enough about it. They're out of Kansas City, aren't they? You know, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'll have to look them I'm, up. I might be wrong. It might be Colorado. Hold I'll look on. it up while you, while you talk about yours. I'll my number four up. is... So with Boulevard, it's part of the Smokestack series, the Tank 7, which is, it was one of the first, I would say for when I went on kind of like a long binge of drinking and drinking. Uh, <laughs> that sounds uh, like you like had a really bad night. <laughs> yeah, it was like four months. But <laughs> <laughs> when I was really into craft beers for a while, um, Tank 7 was one of the first ones that I had that I was like, oh my God, it was delicious. And it still is to this day. So Boulevard, Boulevard is close to my heart being from Kansas City. So, yeah. uh, and surpri no surprise, my number three is the Boulevard Irish Ale. Uh, I, I enjoyed one of those this past weekend at the bachelor party because we were back down in Kansas City. And, and sometimes it they usually have a good job of keeping those in Omaha. But if you go to Kansas City, man, you get the entire array uh, and wherever you go, they're guaranteed to have it. So it was nice. Yeah, the, but the Boulevard Irish Elf, Boulevard in general, like Colin just picked one, I picked one. You can't go wrong. Uh, but those are, that's my favorite. Uh, my number three, I'm taking a left turn from beer and going straight into scotch. I was relying on you to do that <laughs> since I don't drink those. Uh, scotch, it's a tough one of which one I would say. But Glen Morangi, um, my favorite is just the Glen Morangi Gold. I think it's I think it's called Original. But I've had a number in recent months slash the last year where it is very tough to pick one. They're all very good, and as someone who enjoys a good Scotch, just top notch. Nice. So <laughs> I always I've always wished that I was that I could acquire that taste because it always seems so. so so sophisticating. I've, I've heard the best way to learn this is from someone at work. He was telling us the way to get used to drinking whiskey or scotch or bourbon is a finger in like a regular pint glass, just yeah. a finger pour 
fill the rest of it with water and oh. you just kind of like you just sip it eventually like you'll kind of lose the flavor so you go two fingers rest with water and you'll kind of just slowly start making your way to where you're dropping water to get flavor and just adding or keeping about two two and a half fingers of whiskey scotch whatever it may be eventually you'll just have the taste boom or you could or you can do what i did and just drink a lot of it and slowly <laughs> get used to it but so. if you <laughs> listeners can say that you've never learned something from the show i guarantee you didn't know that so yeah so, so keep that in mind go. yeah keep that in mind okay but i'll stick to beer uh number two classic i think you can get this pretty much ever but a new belgium fat tire has always been one of my favorite beers and uh just it's usually my go-to if i'm not feeling if i'm feeling a craft beer i'm gonna go with a fat tire so that's the new belgium brand all right, so my number one, a uh, brand, not brand new, but new to me, I just found them out here and had no clue that when I went out to Park City, Utah, that's where they are from. But it's uh, the Wasatch brand and uh, Wasatch Brewery, and they make the Devastator, which is their double bock, and it's fantastic. Like, it is my favorite beer I have found in a very, very, very long time. So uh, it's W-A-S-A-T-C-H. I'm not sure how far they make it from Utah, but obviously they made it to Nebraska. So I think they've got a pretty good range on their beers, but we just started to see them crop up here recently. But their Devastator is one of my favorite. Surprisingly, when I went out there, I went to the brewery and all the beers that they had like on tap were ones that we don't even get here. So uh, it's interesting. I'm sure the closer you are to Park City, Utah, the more recent beers and, and stuff you get, but their their whole brand and everything like that is fantastic. Okay. Can you still hear me? Yep. Now you're good. Okay. My number one is I'm currently drinking it right now is Goose Island Bourbon County Bourbon County brand stout. So good. Only comes out. Every, they release it every year on Black Friday. It's the only day it's out. Most places sell out of it that day. Somehow we came across some in Omaha uh like the first week of december and i was so glad you opened one. my eyes to that and you took me uh, to that event because oh man I, I had no idea that it was that it was that good it was it was it's one of those beers that you don't know what a great stout is until you've had one of these yeah so. <laughs> yep i would agree well there you go folks <laughs> That we covered it all. And so in the reviews, uh, in the surveys, uh, I had a lot of different comments from you guys, but a lot of them revolved around uh, top fives, doing um, all sorts of stuff. You, but you guys did also want some, just some general life stuff of what Colin and I like. So there you go. This That was this show. I tried to take all of the survey information and do it into this show. So if you liked it, say you liked it, tweet it, tweet me or something like that and say, Hey, that was, that was cool. That was a lot better. Or if you didn't like some of the changes, you can let me know about that too. But I, I had a lot of fun. I think I love top fives. They're a great way to go through content, I think. And so I liked going through the Apple announcement in that manner, but we will be back next week. We will be back next week. I'll just say it now, barring any unforeseen issues. I'll just say that, but, uh, but we should be here next week. And just a reminder that this is a part of the 2980 network. So 2980 network.com is where you go for all of your show notes, subscription links, all of the information about any other podcast or anything pretty much that I do can be found over there. But it is also part of the Geeks Network, thegeeksnetwork.com. Head over there and check out the other podcasts. And thank you to WLMNRadio.com. One quick reminder at the end of this is uh, there actually has been a pickup. I don't know if you guys remembered it or if one person started using it a lot more. I'm not sure. But the Amazon link is still out there. And you guys can help out the show if you shop on Amazon and use our affiliate code, just 2980network.com slash Amazon. If you make that your Amazon bookmark, doesn't cost you anything, but we just get a, like a few cents from everything you buy. But like I'd forgotten kind of to keep checking up on it and I went back in and people had started using it again. So hopefully you guys are still using that. I really appreciate it. We all do. It helps cover the costs here. And, um, and that is going to just about do it. Colin, thank you for another fantastic week. Your insights as always are top notch. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. All right. So we are going to hop off, but we will see you guys next week. But until we do, Tech on.